And with weathering, you really can't mess much up to where you can't fix it. Or sometimes it's just a fun thing to see when it starts to spit and spatter and things. It leaves a different look on the airplane. <laughs> Hey pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm your product specialist, Wesley, and today we're gonna have a fun video about custom airbrushing and weathering a Nexa model here. Now, it doesn't have to just be a Nexa airplane. This will work on your flight line ones. Uh, the techniques we're gonna show to you today are gonna be for one of these blue naval aircraft. Uh, you could use some of these techniques still on your uh, green and gray and other colored airplanes. Just remember your color options are going to be different. Uh, but for today, like I said, we're doing this one. Uh, remember weathering is something that is uh, a taste in the eye of the beholder is what I would say in the nicest way. Uh, so, you know, I'm sure I'll catch flack from some people of how I did this, but I like the way it looks and that's all that matters at the end of the day. And that's all that should matter to you when you're airbrushing your airplane. So what we're going to be doing today is setting our airbrush to 30 pounds of air pressure on this. I'm going to be using the super cheap apple barrel paint and like Americana. So if you've got a Walmart or a Michael, something like that around you, that's the paint I'm using. Uh, the way we did this is I selected a little bit lighter color blue to start with than the overall color of the airplane. I then took and dropped that into a little stirring cup and we added about an equal parts of water to it that there was paint. I then mixed that up and tested it by dripping it on the side of the cup. If you see the paint start to flow down the side of the cup, you have it light enough. If you put a blob on the side of the cup and it sticks and it does not flow down the side of the cup, you need to keep them and put a couple more drops of water in there, stir it up and test again. Once you have that paint light enough, let's go on and dump that into our airbrush and let's start painting. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go in between each panel on the wing of the airplane. Nice thing on these Nexa ones, they already come with panel lines and rivets drawn all over the airplane for you. So you don't have to do this part. All you gotta do is take that light blue and start putting it just in the center of each panel. Go around the model, pick them out. There's different inspection hatches. Make sure you paint the center of the inspection hatches, you know? And there's, there's a ton of this detail on the wing. Now don't worry about overdoing it. We're gonna tone it down with some other colors in the future, but go on around to all the dark blue of this airplane uh, if it's a large panel, like the top of the cowling, just kind of splotch it around. You know, you wouldn't have a really clean spot on top of the cowling, even though we can't pick out those individual spots. Let's make the top of the cowling really light and fading down as we go. You know, the top of the airplane is going to be the most sun beaten part. And what you're trying to do in this is make it look like the sun is really beat on this and kind of faded the paint. The next step on this process is going to be to do the gray. Now, for the gray, what we're going to do is make streaks up and down the wing. Remember to always keep the direction of airflow in mind. You want to make it to where the streaks are always the direction the air would be flowing over that panel. So in the case of our wing, start at the leading edge and make nice swooshing passes at the wing to get that white streak going up and down. You can also pick out the back of some of the panels, uh, your inspection patches, those kind of things. Add some of that white in there also, just in the back. If you have a piece of cardstock, you can always put that across the panel, then shoot across the cardstock. That leaves that uh, nice crisp line. And we're gonna show you that when we get to the next step. I really didn't do it on the white ones that much. Uh, same thing for the lighter blues of the airplane. So this is a two-toned paint job. On the lighter shades of uh, blue, you could do a light color, but in my case, I just took that gray and kind of misted that into the center of each of those light uh, blue panels just to give them some of that sun fading also. You don't want to go too crazy because most of that is halfway down the airplane. The sun wouldn't be getting there near as much as it would on the top deck of the fuselage. You can also take some streaks and make it look like it was setting there being rained on and it's had some of that water built up over time 
by taking your airbrush and going up and down on the back of the fuselage. That'll give you some nice streaks back there on the back of the fuselage, makes it look really good. So once we have that color where we're happy with it, what we're gonna do now is switch to black. Remember, each time, just make sure you make the stuff thin enough before you start spraying it. Also, be kind of careful here. Uh, as you get a layer of paint built up, if you really rub on this too hard, you're gonna take it off. Now, we're gonna clear coat this at the very end. If you're gonna use the cheap paint like this, you've gotta clear coat it at the end. Otherwise, you'll rub it off. That is very, very important on this. Now, if you buy some higher quality paints, you know, our Tamiya's here, uh, you know, an oil-based paint, or just something that's lacquer based, it won't come off very easily. But if you're going to use this cheap paint, keep that in mind. Any kind of water, if you try and rub something off with it until you've clear coated this, you're going to take the paint job right off of it and be back down to zero. The good news is, if you don't like how it turns out, take some water on a rag and you can wipe all this off before we clear coat it and start over again. Now, like I said, we've taken the black now. And what you'll see is I like to take a piece of paper and I pick out a panel line on the model, hold that piece of paper right on top of that panel, and then spray my black over it. Now what you're gonna notice is my airbrush started to actually clog up at this point and it was spitting and spattering. And normally I would take it apart and clean it, but it actually kind of looked cool at this part. It looks kind of like oil was splattering across the top of the airplane. So I just let it run and we finished out the airplane by letting that black spitter and spatter and just kind of come clogged out of there. Uh, the way you'd fix that, of course, is you just clean your airbrush and maybe thin that paint out just a little bit more to get it to spray a little nicer. But like I said, it was a happy mistake here. And with weathering, you really can't mess much up to where you can't fix it. Or sometimes it's just a fun thing to see when it starts to spit and spatter and things. It leaves a different look on the airplane. At the end of the day, you're trying to mist this stuff all over it and get different colors. So when you look at it, your eye doesn't pick one color out. It picks out that there's a mixture of colors and it just kind of all blends together to you. Uh, once again, I took that paper technique and went all around on all the ribs for the fuselage, uh, some of the panels on the wings, and just painted all that up. So for the clear coat step we talked about, what we used is the Krylon matte finish. Now I will tell you, most guys, you're gonna wanna use a matte finish if you're doing a Warbird. If you do a clear, shiny one, it's not gonna look right on a Warbird. Uh, most of these airplanes did not have shiny finishes. Now, if you're going for the CAF paint job where it just came out and it's factory fresh, yeah, you could hit it with some clear varnish uh, that's a you know shinier finish, but it wouldn't look right for what we're doing in this case. So. Like I said, take a matte finish. Like I said, the Krylon matte finish. Uh, this one's 1311 is the number of it. But yeah, uh, we've used several different ones. Uh, Rust-Oleum makes a really good matte varnish also. Uh, but at this point, like I said, we went over the whole airplane and sprayed it. Make sure you have a well-ventilated area. We definitely opened the door that day and kind of let the fumes go out because we did paint it in here in the shop. Uh, but if you do this in your house, your wife is going to probably kill you. Uh, so I would not recommend doing that. After it all sets up and clears, uh, the airplane is pretty much finished. Now, one thing I will tell you about the matte coats, if you are new to airbrushing and you're worried about messing it up, do your first color if you really like the way it looks and you want to be able to clean stuff off in the future, matte varnish it between each layer. So if you do all of your blues first and you really like how it looks, clear coat it and then do your next color over top of that. And if you make a mistake, it's as simple as taking water at that point and you can wipe it right off. Water will not reactivate your matte finish spray paint. So you can rub on it all you want without taking it off. That's a little trick that you can have on this though. Well, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope this little video was very uh, useful to you and you've decided to try airbrushing for yourself. As always, we have our Benchcraft line of airbrushes here. That's what you've been seeing me use throughout the painting process of this video. Uh, if you're interested in checking out any of the other weathering techniques, we've done some other painting on the channel here and I hope you really enjoyed it. So. Hey, without further ado, whether it's land, sea, or air, Motion RC has what you want, and we will catch you in that next video, guys.
Bye.